The microphones used to capture sound and video productions are a fairly deep subject. However, the basics are very simple, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. First of all, these external on-camera shotgun microphones just aren't very good tools to use to capture the sound for your videos. These little microphones are simply an upgrade over the built-in mics on your camera. The big problem with on-camera microphones, like the Rode VideoMic Pro, is that they're on top of your camera. They're just too far away from the sound source. Microphones need to be as close to the sound as possible, which brings us to our first pointer. By close, I mean 12 to 18 inches. Now this mostly applies to capturing dialogue, but it's such an important thing that you should always keep it in the back of your mind. So, if your plan is to stick a little shotgun microphone on top of your camera and be done with it, chances are your footage won't sound very professional, especially if someone is speaking to the camera. Using a boom pole to get the microphone close is a must. Similarly, if your plan is to mount a portable digital recorder on top of your camera and then attach it to the camera's microphone input using a SESCOM cable, and then use the built-in microphones on the portable digital recorder as an on-camera mic, the same pointer applies. You really need to get the microphones closer. In this case, you really should be using the recorder as an XLR adapter for the camera, not using the recorder's built-in microphones. Now, using a lavalier microphone is a good idea. It could be a wireless Sennheiser G3 system, or perhaps a wired Tram TR50. But either way, lavalier microphones tend to sound pretty good because they're within 12 to 18 inches of the speaking person's mouth. However, if you're only using a lavalier microphone to pick up the audio, you're taking a risk. People tend to speak emphatically when they're on camera, and they speak with their hands a lot. And they also tend to drive home points by pounding themselves in the chest. And you never really realize how often they do that until they're only wearing a lav to pick up the audio. Having a second microphone on a boom pole over the head of the subject does a world of good. If you work alone, you can easily mount your microphone and boom pole with a C-stand and a boom cradle. Links to where you can buy all of this stuff can be found on my blog, www.sammallory.com. I've been driving home the fact that it's always important to use a microphone on a boom pole whenever you record because it gets the microphone as close as possible to the sound source. However, it's not always best to use a shotgun microphone when you boom indoors. It's actually better to use a microphone called a hypercardioid condenser microphone. This microphone just has a more natural sound when you boom audio indoors. Shotguns are very directional, and they capture an unnatural amount of sound reflections from the floor, walls, and ceiling. The result is that the dialogue recorded indoors has a weird, yet subtle, unnatural sounding echo. Professional location sound people tend to use very specific makes and models of hypercardioid microphones when they boom dialogue indoors. For a complete list of these microphones and links to where you can buy them, visit my blog, www.sammallory.com. Sometimes you'll need to use your shotgun indoors. Like, it could be a really wide shot in a big room, and you just can't get your hyper close enough to the sound source for good audio. In other kinds of rooms, the shotgun microphone just might sound better. You always just use your ears and see which microphone is the best to use in any given situation. Remember, these are not rules, they're just pointers. The best microphones to use in video production are all very sensitive, and as a consequence, they're all prone to suffering from wind noise when used outdoors. So additional wind protection is a required purchase. The foam windscreen that came with the microphone that you bought just isn't robust enough to really diffuse the sound of rushing air when you use it outdoors, so it's no good. Since shotgun microphones are primarily used outdoors, buying additional wind protection for them is a must. 
Now there are dense and fluffy windscreens like this available that are sometimes referred to as softies, and they're not very expensive. However, if you're gonna be shooting in a very windy location, you have to have a big blimp like this. Even little tiny lavalier microphones suffer from wind noise when they're used outdoors. So little tiny fluff balls like this are used to protect them from the wind noise. Now that we've reached these little tiny balls of fluff, we've reached the end of the video. Thank you for watching and for a lot more information about creative production equipment and techniques, please visit my blog, sammallory.com. Thanks.